Hello there, my friendly military aficionados, and welcome to another video from the Space Marine Armory. Before I begin, I would like to thank everyone who watches these videos, especially the ones from this series, since so far they have been getting considerably more views than many of my other series. So thank you again for the support. For today's topic we are going to once again alternate since last time we talked about power armor marks. Thus, today we will talk about bolters again, specifically about bolter ammunition types. This will also probably be my most technical video yet, as I will talk about multiple kinds of rounds over several different diagrams. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about bolt gun slash bolter types of ammo, shall we? The most common bolter round is the 75 caliber explosive tipped mass reactive bolt. However, Space Marines and other Imperial forces do use a variety of other ammunition, each one tailored for specific needs. The Standard Bolt the standard bolt is the, who would have guessed it, standard issue anti-personnel ammunition for the bolter. It is designed to penetrate a target and detonate, causing horrific damage. For the internal details we have the solid fuel rocket propellant base at number 1, an outer casing containing conventional charge at number 2, the gyro stabilizer at number 3, the mass reactive fuse, which has a split second timer to delay detonation upon impact until after the shot penetrates the target, at number 4. At number 5 we have the hardened diamantine penetrating tip, which allows for the bolt to penetrate most armor before detonation. At number 6 we have the main charge. And at number 7 we have the depleted uranium core. This is a very dense material which adds weight and momentum to the round when in flight. This also helps in the bolt's penetration of the victim. The Kraken Penetrator Rounds These are potent, more power armor piercing rounds than the standard bolt. The uranium core is replaced by a solid adamantium core and uses a heavier main charge. Upon impact, the outer casing peels away and the high-velocity adamantium needle accelerates into the victim, where the larger detonator propels shards of superheated metal further into the wound. These are effective against heavily armored infantry. At the internal details, we have the main charge, which is increased to enable a larger explosion at number 1, and at number 2, the uranium core which was replaced by a core of pure adamantium to optimize the penetration of reinforced armor. The Inferno Bolt These are designed to immolate their targets and destroy them with superheated chemical fire. The uranium core is replaced with an oxyphosphorus gel, known as promethium. However, due to the decreased projectile mass, armor piercing capability is compromised. At number 1 we have the uranium core which was replaced with a special gel that ignites with oxygen. The Hellfire Bolt These were created as one of the Imperium's measures to stem the predations of the Tyranids upon the galaxy. Each bolt is tipped with a thousand needles and a vial of mutagenic acid, capable of dissolving its way through chitin and carapace with equal ease. When the round enters the target's body, the vial shatters and the needles pierce the victim's flesh, pumping the acid into the target. Such was the success of the Hellfire Bolt that it has found a use against a variety of enemies, its acid just as effective at killing other foul xenos. At number 1 we can see the replaced uranium core with the vial of mutagenic acid. The point is also replaced with a chemical substance that causes the vial to detonate once it has penetrated the enemy's armor. The Metal Storm Frag Bolt In this one the mass reactive fuse of the standard bolt was replaced by a proximity fuse, and the uranium core and diamantine tip 
are replaced with increased high explosives and a fragmentation casing. This means the bolt explodes when it nears an enemy, creating a lethal hail of shrapnel. This bolt is capable of inflicting casualties on multiple lightly armored targets, but its effectiveness is dramatically reduced when facing heavily armored foes like Chaos Space Marines. For the internal details, we have a mini gyro stabilizer at number 1, the fragmentation casing at number 2, the increased charge at number 3, the fragmentation charge at number 4, and the proximity detector at number 5. The Stalker Silence Shells These ones are bolter rounds with low sound signature, meant for covert fighting. They are often used in conjunction with an M40 targeter system, an extended barrel, and a stock to create a sniping weapon system. A gas cartridge replaces both the propellant base and main charge for silent firing, but this sacrifices muzzle velocity as a result. A solidified mercury slug replaces the mass reactive warhead for lethality at subsonic projectile speed. For the internal details, we have a gas cartridge at number 1, the solidified mercury slug at number 2, and a smooth diamantine tip at number 3. And that was it for the more standard types of bolter shells. Next, I'm gonna talk about some highly specialized and unique types of shells, either used in very rare situations or only by specific Imperial forces. I also apologize, but I didn't find any pictures on them, so I'll just have to use some regular bolter artwork. The Anti-Phasic Shells Utilized by Deathwatch kill teams, these rounds were developed using an unknown technology to help prevent the Necrons from phasing out and returning to their tomb complexes. In this way, Imperial forces can ensure that even their undying foes stay dead. Blood Shard Shells These are large, bolt-shaped shells intended to be fired only by the Angelus Pattern Bolter, used by the Sanguinary Guard of the Blood Angels and their successors. Each one contains a payload of razor filament that can shred most known forms of armor upon impact. Dragonfire Bolts These are hollow-shelled bolts that are issued for use by Sternguard veterans and explode with a gout of superheated gas that can eliminate the value of cover for enemy forces. Any target struck receives full damage, even when partially protected by cover. The Hellfrost Bolts These are used exclusively by the Space Wolves chapter, and they are bolt rounds tipped with Hellfrost warheads. In battle, these glittering rounds impart their freezing payload as they explode deep in the flesh of their victim. Very few enemies can survive both the destructive force of a detonating bolt shell and the frigid blast of the shattering Glimmer Frost Crystal. The Psy Cannon Bolts These are used by the Inquisition, primarily by the Ordo Malleus and their militant arm, the Grey Knights chapter. They are very similar in nature to the rounds fired by their namesake, the Psy Cannon, and are similarly used against psychic heretic and demonic targets. Of all the rounds available to the bolter, these are by far the most expensive, as each and every bolt is inscribed with arcane runes on a microscopic level. According to some sources, the bolts derive their anti-psychic effect from being impregnated with an extremely rare negative psychic energy. The sole source of this energy is a metabolic product of the Emperor of Mankind's Golden Throne. The anti-psychic nature of these rounds is not only effective at destroying demonic targets, but also effective at piercing the powerful barriers created by force field generators. These can include the Tau Shield Generator and the Imperium's own Iron Halo, Conversion Field, and Storm Shield. The Scorpius Bolts During the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy eras of the late 30th and early 31st millennia, Scorpius Bolts were individually crafted by the Tech Marines of a Space Marine Legion's armory. 
These specialized shells utilized a two-stage warhead, containing a micro-guidance system and a needle-like sabot dart that vaporizes when striking an armored enemy, providing enhanced armor penetration capability. They were rare and temperamental munitions, which were hand-loaded into a bolter for firing. The Seeker Bolts These are unique, handcrafted rounds created by Chaplain Boreas of the Dark Angels chapter. Each bolt contains a miniaturized cogitator that detects the heat signature of a target and then steers the bolt unerringly towards it. The Tempest Bolts these replace the standard mass reactive core and armor piercing tip of a bolt round with a fragmentation shell encasing a powerful micro explosive proximity charge. This has the effect of showering a target with a murderous storm of shrapnel. These heavier rounds, however, lack range compared to the standard bolt shells. Produced only on Mars, these bolts were designed to be particularly effective at incapacitating machines and other electronic devices. Such bolts are highly effective against targets like combat robots and cyborgs, whose bodies are now more machine than man. Vengeance Rounds These bolts are designed for use against heavy infantry and armored targets. Each bolt has a volatile core utilizing unstable flux core technology that makes them very hazardous to use, but very potent at penetrating through heavily armored targets. They are especially effective at punching clean through ceramite plates of power armor. As their name implies, they were designed by the Imperium specifically to target Chaos Space Marines of the Traitor Legions. Finally, since we talked about bolter rounds, I thought it was only fair to talk a little bit about bolter magazines as well. The Sickle Magazine This is the standard issue magazine throughout the Imperium, seen on most bolter weapons. The shape of the magazine is slightly curved, as to take up less space, and usually carries 20 to 30 bolts. The Straight Magazine this, as the name implies, is a straight version of the sickle magazine. It does hold less ammunition, only 10 to 20 bolts, but it is easier to load in more intense situations. The drum magazine. These are a relatively rare sight in the 41st millennium. This is due to their unreliability. Drum magazines have an unfortunate tendency to jam. However, they can carry up to 40, 60, or even 100 bolts, negating the need to reload very often. Despite the frequent jamming, they can still brook some favor with local hive gangs or planetary defense militias. They are also frequently seen on storm bolters or in brutal assaults, when running empty in a firefight can mean certain death. The Belt Feed some troops forgo using magazines at all, preferring to feed the bolts directly into the firing chamber using a linked belt. Because the belt is exposed to the elements, it is very often clogged with dirt or dust. This can, like the drum magazine, lead to jamming, and is rarely used within the Imperium. However, it is very commonly used by the Chaos Space Marines of the Ruinous Powers. The Duplus X this type of magazine is quite popular among local planetary law enforcement or hive gangs. It involves two sickle magazines, which are attached together by some means, usually a band of cloth or tape, similar to the ready mags of ancient Terra. This means that when the weapon has to be reloaded, the user can simply flip the magazines around and insert the loaded magazine instead. This type is rarely produced officially, usually being air tags manufactured by the shady guys who use them. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the types of bolter ammunition. Who would have thought that we could talk for 15 minutes just about ammo for a fictional gun? Yet, here we are. I will most likely talk about something else in the next video of this series, 
but in case you wanted to know, I will also talk about bolter patterns in the near future. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help me keep the channel alive, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor protects.